Americans about Santa Claus. Adults mind you. For uh, for the afterlife, that's a little less embarrassing for them. They usually just say, "Well, you die, and that's it." They don't so much believe in. They also, if, if if it's younger people, I mean, older people say in their 70s and so on will give have given this a little more thought. Young people have usually been so busy trying to make their own living or getting through school that they haven't taken time to consider such things. And most people are not very interested there. Really is no, say, Japanese equivalent to a young Christian movement or anything like that. I don't know of any such younger groups. Younger people are not interested in religion in general. And so, karma or reincarnation, most people do not believe in those, although those are fundamental Buddhist concepts. Other countries do believe in those. There are different, uh, Buddhism of course is a huge subject, bigger than any of these actually, older than Christianity. Buddhism in a way is like Judaism. Buddhism is 2,500 years old, has a very long and complex history. I don't know very much about Judaism, but I, my impression is that is a scholarly, to really learn about Judaism really requires a scholarly effort to, to understand that religion. Christianity, Catholicism, to really understand Catholicism, I think, takes quite a bit of study. Protestant is not really necessary. For the Protestants, I believe, fundamentally, uh, the most important thing is not the scholastic study, but how you, your direct relationship with God. If I didn't offend anybody, any Protestants here, but that is my potentially volatile uh, description of Protestant. Whereas uh, it's more of a personal feeling. I don't believe Protestants deal so much with the Old Testament. Go ahead and throw your tomatoes if I'm wrong. But it is more of a a personal a personal interpretation of God directly through oneself and not through some other divine authority. Say like Catholics might defer through through the Roman authority and so on. Buddhism doesn't really have any central authority anywhere that big. Closest thing in the world would be the Dalai Lama, who, whose moral authority now is, I think, based upon just the fact that he's such a nice guy. I don't know that really that much about what he believes in. He does believe in reincarnation and karma, and that is Tibetan Buddhism, or Lamanism. And that is also a very, that's outside of um, Japanese Buddhism, in that they are still very grounded in their, what other countries might refer to as superstitions and so on. I know, I've had some contact with Tibetan Buddhists, and they are very grounded in Tibetan folk religions, or certain beliefs or concepts that have come directly out of Tibet. Japanese Buddhists, on the other hand, have a much more scientific or dispassionate or rational view of Buddhism. This is why, for example, they don't believe in reincarnation or karma. But the Dalai Lama is the closest thing to uh, a religious authority in Buddhism. Now, not other sects don't necessarily follow him, but I think uh, if anybody has has uh, seen or heard some of the Dalai Lama's speeches, at the very least, he's a very interesting man. Still, he does not speak for the entire Buddhist world. He is merely uh, as the highest religious figure in all sects of Buddhism, although he is totally unrelated, I would say, to to the group I am in or most other groups, he's still just a very respected figure, partly through the force of his own personality, not so much through his his office. The next Dalai Lama, whoever he may be, if he's not liked, well, that it's, uh, I think that, what can we say, he, nobody would listen to him, he wouldn't make the papers. So it's not so much that this current Dalai Lama has his authority grounded in his office alone, but it's his personal authority which he has cultivated outside of his own country. Inside of his own country, that office will always be their version of the emperor. 
and that will always be the head of state, so long as they go by their traditional uh, government, which of course China is not allowing at the moment. Other aspects of Buddhism is that in Japanese Buddhism in specific, all of the sects, major sects of Buddhism that exist here have come directly from China through the Korean Peninsula. These sects did not, uh, Buddhism started two thousand, roughly 2,500 years ago in what is nowadays uh, northern India or Nepal. That was 2,500 years ago and Buddhism spread from there into China and other parts of Asia and from China it went through the Korean Peninsula and eventually came to Japan. Every one of the 13 major sects in practice today in Japan came directly through China. All of the roots of Japanese Buddhism sects are founded in China. Nowadays they have uh, newer religions in this country. Most of them are cults or business activities taking advantage of tax laws. Lots of cults. It's amazing. But it, usually they're just business ventures. Everybody recognizes them as business ventures. Uh, there's a little bit of they call them the new religions, in which case they frequently don't even have temples. And they meet in business halls, convention centers, and things like that. And uh, frequently you will see these groups in the newspapers for one of the latest financial scandals. They're very good at, well, at making the newspapers for conning people out of their money a common activity, at least that one can see in the newspaper. Well, there are thousands of these new cults, usually based upon some new interpretation of Buddhism, and but I don't think most of them will not have any lasting effect, and probably 90% of them are merely business ventures. They're selling some new book or something like that. Great way to make a lot of money. Nothing particularly Japanese about that. But the 13 basic religions, any one of them uh, would be, would take a, at least an hour to explain. Most of that explanation you would probably forget. I know very little, actually I myself know very little about these other religions. I find them very interesting. Occasionally I will, will if I have a chance, go attend other meetings, even with other cults, not dressed as I am of course, usually in street clothes and a hat pair of jeans, tennis shoes, and uh, very interesting. With these newer cults, you can see more of a sort of dedication to something new. And like all cults, the, the members don't refer to themselves as cult members, and they are very enthusiastic about their new religion or their new way, and so on. But in fact, cults, uh, Christian cults, uh, perhaps are not so much difficult are different from Japanese cults in that sense. It's the basic cult pattern. Except for Japanese cults are a lot more passive, generally speaking, than Christian cults. I mean, it's very difficult to get arms in this country, although uh, Asahara Shoko would be the, the, let's see, I'm trying to remember, Supreme Truth Cult? I forget what they call him. Uh, the Om Shinri Kyo, in Japanese is the word, was quite a shock to the Japanese. That was a, a new experience for them. So they sort of gained the world stage for in cult activity through that. But otherwise, uh, as far as I know, there are no other cults that have amassed arms or, or that have pulled themselves up. In fact, even that, although Asahara Shoko was a cult member, he uh, it was very obvious from the very beginning that he was not really a religious activity. He has stated goal from the very beginning was to become the king of Japan. <laughs> oh, yeah, we can laugh. And that, you know, it's laughable. But uh, that was his intent, and of course later was, was to take over the world. But uh, hardly anything religious about that. So, let's see, how about we take a short break here and come back in five or ten minutes, and if you have any questions regarding anything, please ask. Yeah. <laughs> 